rejected by them. Each one of those 33 publishers has committed suicide since. Because <laughs> I don't know exactly the figures, but a couple of years ago I heard they had 165 million books in print. I read his, uh, he was talking about his goals, and I read a transcript of this. He, he said, uh, our plan is to have a billion books in print. And you read it, I thought, how many people read books in the world? There's 6.8 billion people in the world. It's like, not many of them can afford books. So some people have got to buy a lot of books for you to have a billion books in print. But once you got to 165 million, wouldn't you think that was achievable? The challenge is they set that goal well before then. He said they laughed at us when we said we were going to sell 10 million. I think it was something like once we got to 40 million, we thought we might as well go for it. <laughs> By the way, I've read that Stephen King has, more, uh, has a billion books in print. Isn't that interesting? So is it possible? Of course it's possible. You know? The challenge is, is it what you really want to do? Is this going to lead you to where you really want to be? Okay, number five. <laughs> the P word. You have to plan. I don't know who said it. They said, um, spectacular achievement is always preceded by unspectacular preparation. Sorry to break it to you. Napoleon Hill said all those years ago when I was reading his stuff, he had a six-step process, absolutely wonderful process. And, um, you know, not just uh, that, it very much a focus on money. At that time, that was a way to be an achiever. Um, but it, uh, Thomas Edison read this formula. He said, this is a formula to be a successful inventor, not just, you know, someone who makes a lot of money. And uh, Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi, imported 80,000 copies of that book into, into India because he knew that that philosophy was essential for his people. So he wanted to get it to key people. And um, what he said was his formula, his process is, number one, you've got to decide exactly what it is that you want. Number two, decide when it is that you're going to have this. Well, actually, number two was not, not decide when. Number two was decide what you're going to give in return for it. What are you going to give in return for this? Number three was set a definite date. Number four was develop a definite plan, even though you don't even know what you're going to do. And here's the problem. You don't even know what's going to take you there when you start out. How am I going to get there? Not knowing how is actually what stops a whole lot of people. I have to tell you that um, it wasn't too many years ago. This is my eighth trip to America. And I love America. It's really wonderful. I love going home from America, but I love being here. And um, I love the country. I love the people. I love the, the friendliness and the uh, engagement. And... Um, but back when I first started with this, I had actually never been outside of Australia. And uh, I had my first real job. And I got my first tax return. It's a few hundred dollars. And I went to my wife and I said, I want to go to America. And she said, great. And then she thought about it a while and she came back to me. She said, we can't go up to America next year when you want to go. She said, I've worked it out. Here's how much money we have. Here's how much money we need. And here's where we are, and here's where you want to go. And if we save everything we can possibly save over the next year, we're going to have this much. So I've worked out that we could probably afford to go in about three years. And I said, no, we're going to go next year. Because this bit here that we don't know how is what we're going to have to work out. Now that bit there is what stops most people. That's what stops them. That's why they don't go ahead. So you have this idea, and I, I'm, I'm saying you have this idea, I'm projecting. I had this idea as well, that these people who achieve, actually, you know, they've got this belief. Well, the belief wasn't there for a lot of them at the start. It was just an idea. It was just a thing of like, would, that would be good, wouldn't it? Wow, wouldn't that be great? Don't know if I can. At some point, though, they decided to go for it. I read a quote by um, a, a guy that was interviewing Muhammad Ali when he was uh, um, Cassius Clay. Who, know, who remembers? <laughs> Who's old enough to remember? <laughs> Very good. And uh, he's gonna, his defining fight of his career at that point, he's going uh, to meet Sonny Liston. And this guy's interviewing him. He says, it's Mort, Mort Sharnik, I think it is. He says... Uh, Muhammad, I want you to tell me about, you know, Sonny Liston. And Muhammad starts on his thing. He's like, ah, oh, that old bear, you know, rah, rah, just, you know, how he did 
lots of lip. And this guy says, no, forget that, forget that. Just tell me the truth. What do you really think? And apparently Cassius got a little bit subdued. And he said, well, to tell you the truth, I feel a bit how Columbus must have felt. I think the world is round, but when I get out there, I'm going to find out it is or I'm going to fall off. I think I can beat this guy, but when I get in the ring, I'm going to find out. I read that and I think, wow, that was so helpful to me. The, great, the guy who was the greatest sportsman of all time. By the way, he said it before it happened, didn't he? And he said it, and I, I, in Australia, they hate people shooting off their mouth. So we were sitting there in our lounge rooms, and this guy's going, I'm the greatest. And we're like, shut up. <laughs> Hope you get your, you know. <laughs> Did he? No, he was able to walk the talk. He was able to follow through. But at the beginning, he didn't know he was going to be able to for sure. He was able to get himself up to perform even though he didn't know for sure that that was going to happen. Now, the great power that we have is that we have access to these wonderful tools to deal with the problems of doubt. And you want to apply EFT to that. EFT gets applied very often to remedial stuff. Fix this, fix that, fix that problem. And the challenge is we need to start applying it, I believe, some of the time to creation, to, to building a sort of world that we want to, want to live in. What would be good to have? What would be great to create? What, would, what if we could do this? What if we could do that? That sort of stuff is what I'm interested in. But you've got to plan. And who has problems with planning? <laughs> Me too. Me too. It's an ongoing work. Um, the next step is actually the commitment step. Now, these aren't discrete categories, but at some point you've got to commit and say, I will do this. I will do this. A lot of people say, I've got this goal, but it isn't really a goal, it's just a wish. And you've got to progress through stages of commitment. I'm going to give an exercise with this later on, um, of, of working on your own commitment. But the key of all of this is getting yourself into action. The great power is available to people who can get themselves to do things. The difference between you and anyone who's ahead of you in any area, anybody who's achieving what you want to achieve, whatever that is, is, is really just action. And the challenge is we, we don't... We, we don't want to do it if we aren't going to do it well. We don't want to take the step where we might do it wrong. And uh, I wish I could remember who told me this. They said, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing badly. Because everything you do well, you did badly. And EFT, you can treat yourself for having to do badly so that you can do well. Okay? That's the key. That's, what the rubber, that's where the rubber hits the road. And, and my hope today is that you'll actually do something with what we do. We'll start the, the working part of, uh, of this after the break, which we're going to go to now. We're going to have 15 minutes, and I've been told by Gary that I need to be precise. So my watch says it is 10 to 10. We will come back at 5 after. Um, who was it that said that thing about Bob Hope? Would you come up to the microphone? Who was it that just said something to me about Bob? Would you come up to the microphone? I want to hear that again. I said to Steve, Bob Hope, on, on the show that they were honoring him, said, you can tell as you get older, first you forget the name, then you forget the face, then you forget to zip down, and last you forget to, no, you forget to zip up, and then you forget to zip down. <laughs> I screwed it Thank up. Thank you. <laughs> I'm still getting that bit right, so I'm still okay. She said it's age, but I've done that all my life. Goodness me. Anyone who runs those memory programs, you could come to me. Um, right, now I want to get into some work. The, the last point I want to make here is I want to give you a, a, an overview of my um, process for working with sports people. I already mentioned the first step is actually to deal with current challenges. The second step is to go from there... Well, actually, this isn't discreet, but the next step is actually to go to working on ultimate goals. Then you're going to deal with belief and value challenges. Top of the tree is, is issues of identity. If you're talking about a sporting team, they have this as well. 
when I first went to work with the Perth Heat baseball team. I hadn't worked with a professional sporting team. And um, I went to the, I managed to get this meeting. In fact, I was running around doing work with um, a transport company. And I happened to find out that one of these guys was a director on this team. So I said to him, you know, what do you guys do in your peak performance work? He said, oh, I just don't think we do enough of that stuff. I said, well, I just happened to have been getting into that recently. So he invited me along, and I went to a meeting with the key people in the organization. And I said, well, what's the challenge? And they said, well, we are the winningest team in the league. We win more games than any other team. But we get to the finals and we choke. In 40 minutes, I know that's how long it was because I looked at my watch, I heard three separate people make the statement, we can win all the games in the regular season, but we always choke in the finals. So I said, stop, I've diagnosed the problem. You guys say, we always choke in the finals. What do you think is going to happen this year? Okay. Now, this is belief system, right? And there's a very pervasive belief system in that organization. So first thing I said was, yeah, did you choke last year? Yeah, they've been six years. They got in the finals six years in a row and choked. So I said, the fact is, yes, you did that. But that was last year's team. That was a different team. This is a new team, and this year you're going to do something different. This year you're going to, this year you're going to set your goal to win the championship. And they did, and they won the championship that year. Now, did they have a challenging period just prior to the, the finals? Absolutely, they did. And that's the time when you bring out all your gear and you work with them. You've got to bring out all their fears, bring out all their issues, all their stuff, and treat it. Because they actually got there, they were winning all the games. Then just before the finals, they started to lose a few. So we ran a session with the whole team, and I put all of the fears up, and we dealt with them. Because the fears have to be out there to be dealt with, I really, truly believe. So, beliefs and values and identity is always moving to the next level. You can get everything great, but then when you go up another level, there'll be another level of stress. And a lot of the old stuff will come up again when you, when you move to that next level. So taking them to the next level involves using skills like visualization and so on to get them to feel comfortable there. And you can use EFT to get them to feel comfortable being there in their mind, feeling it and seeing it and, and, and believing it. Okay? I didn't finish Napoleon Hill's six steps for those of you who are diligently writing it down. He said you've got to decide exactly what you want. You've got to decide what you're going to give in return for it. You've got to decide a definite date by when you're going to do this. You've got to make up a plan and start right away, ready or not. You've got to, you've got to write out a statement that says exactly what you're going to do, exactly when you're going to do it by, and what your plan is, and sign it and commit to it. And then, and this is key, and this hasn't been superseded in all the years since that's been written, every day check in and imagine yourself already there, already having it, already doing it, already being it. Now, that's a real challenge. When I started working with Pat, he couldn't imagine himself playing Major League, and if he did, the picture was unclear or he got really tense or whatever. Now he knows he is a major league player. And the external world just has to do what it has to do. They haven't caught up with him yet. That's the absolute truth of the matter. Okay? Now the other thing that I end up working with with most athletes, if I work with them long enough, is relationships. Because there's always somebody that, that their performance is important to, somebody that, um, who is counting on them to perform so they can eat, or something like that, somebody who's funding them, who's invested in them, someone who they want to make proud, whatever it is, is dealing with that stuff. Okay? So that's the basic format. Now, I'm not going to get into any more of that because I've talked enough, it's time to actually do some work. So I want to get some of my people up, and my plan is because we have um, a bunch of people, I want to do a little bit with a lot of people as much as I can, and hopefully open up some stuff for them. I'm not going to leave them neatly wrapped up in a nice box as Gary has done with, with some of the people he's worked with because he's allowed enough time. My intention is actually to give them some stuff to go and work on for themselves. Because when I get stuck on an issue for myself, eventually, after persistence doesn't work and all the stuff I know doesn't work, I consult with somebody and I only need one session with them to help me to work on the other stuff because I can't see it because it's unconscious to me. It's unconscious blocking beliefs. Okay? So we're going to do some work on beliefs. And Gary talks about beliefs being like a tabletop with legs. And there might be some very big legs. These are significant emotional experiences. This is just an idea. Now, some of the people on my list, let me see. Pat, why don't you get back up? 
Lisa, why don't you come up and Mary? These are people who came to me. Why don't you grab yourselves a microphone each and uh, Lisa, Eric, Mary, Sirfati, Sir, Sir that's you. Okay. All right. Now, we'll just deal with belief that you're already conscious of. If we were working together, I could dig down for some of your unconscious beliefs. But what is a, a belief associated with building your practice that you know is holding you back? I'm not, I'm not good enough. Or Very good. That'll do. Okay. Very common. I'm not good enough. I need to go to another 100 seminars or I need to do another you know, 10 years training or I need to right. all this stuff. Okay? Now, that's just an idea. That idea is actually floating around in the, in the myriad of ideas. This just We're surrounded by them. But somehow you've got a connection to that idea. And that connection didn't... It, it, it's happened through some events, some experiences. How do you know you're not good enough? Actually, I know I'm good, but when something, sometimes they say, oh, you have no degrees, ah, you have no is. letters behind okay. your name. All right. So you see the society and, they, and you, know, you see people getting degrees and you right. see people saying that's important or you hear that and so on, um, etc. And so this, this idea may actually relate to some other ideas like I'm not smart enough. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, these things are not actually on their own. By the way, I don't see them as table. This model came from Robert Cialdini. He had, wrote a book called Influence. It's a great model. He says you knock out the legs and the table fall, top falls down. I actually see these things as having roots. Okay. And some of these things are really root things to us. Okay. Um, so we're totally rooted in the Australian sense. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> And some of them are bigger than others, and if you actually deal with that, then this idea will just go back into the field of ideas. It's no longer you. You have made it you, okay? So it's just an idea. But at the moment, it's connected to you by these things. Um, there's probably some more. Sure. We could search for early experiences where you learn you're not good enough. Um, mm -hmm. But I want to say that's connected to another idea, I'm not smart enough, which may be stronger. I don't have that one. Oh, really? I know I'm very smart. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, try this. Rub this sore spot. I like rubbing the sore spot, by the way. We do this fairly consistently. You don't all do this necessarily, nor tea, okay, because we don't want you to be tapped out. Very, very important. So you just say, even though I know I am smart enough. Even though I'm smart enough. Don't you please, you just do it silently. Because otherwise I'll get in trouble off Gary. Do I do it silently too? No, you do it out loud. Oh, okay. Because we're, we're, we're doing it. Okay? Oh, right. So even though I know I am smart enough. Even though I know I'm smart that's enough. That's really not the issue. That is not really the issue. What is the issue? What is the issue? I'm looking for it. Ah, well, I think the smart one is the issue. So I'm going to actually guess at this. And now our style is actually to, to what Gary calls it testing. We call it provoking. Okay. Uh, actually, so, I found something. No, I'm sticking with what I like. Okay. <laughs> I just got no, something. I'm, I'm not worried about it. Okay. I'm, I'm running this. Rub this spot. So even though I'm too dumb to build my practice. Even though I'm too dumb to build my practice. I haven't got any real credentials. I don't have any credentials. I accept myself. I accept myself. Even though I'm too dumb. Even although I'm too dumb. I'm not smart enough. I'm not smart enough. And only smart people can succeed at this. And only smart people can succeed at this. I accept myself. I accept myself. Happy to say I'm too dumb. Too dumb. Too dumb. No, no, you follow me. Oh, okay. All right. I'm sorry. And start doing it yourself. Okay. Okay, you've got to follow the smart people. Tap here. <laughs> you can't even follow a direction. What chance have you got? <laughs> Say, I'm too dumb. I'm too dumb. Say, so that's not true. That's not true. Well, what is true? What is true? If you're smart enough. I'm smart enough. Or you're not enough of something. I figure you aren't what smart I, enough. What I realize. Only the smart people can succeed in business. Only smart people can succeed in business. And I'm not one of them. And I'm not one of them.
Take a deep breath. Now, you were going to say there was some other side issue that might have... I get discouraged. Discouraged? By what? When I don't get... When I don't get... I get discouraged easily. Okay. You're sort of impatient. Exactly. Impatient. All right. All right. Rub this spot. So even though I'm too impatient... Even though I'm too impatient... I want the results now. I want the results now. And I want it immediately. I want them immediately. I want it effortlessly and yesterday. I want them effortlessly and yesterday. I accept myself. I accept Come myself. Let's go a bit faster. Got to go faster. Got to get there fast. quicker. Hurry go up, keep up. Hurry up, hurry up. Come on. We've come on, go. come on. <laughs> I want you to be transformed in an instant. I want to be transformed in an instant. We can't wait around. Can't wait around. And if this doesn't work... And if that doesn't work... You'll be discouraged, won't you? Be discouraged, yeah. Take a deep breath. Well, I'm just going to let you sit with that for a while. Yeah, okay. Okay, Pat. Thank you. Don't say thank you. We haven't done anything yet. <laughs> um, I just realized that sometimes I'm embarrassed by wealth. Um, uh, what came up for me was I was, my grandparents were extremely Embarrassed wealthy. by you having it or other people having it? Well, I grew up in this big, huge house, but there was always this energy of struggle. And it was like, I, I kept feeling like we don't really deserve to have this house. And my no. grandparents were really rich no. and I Why didn't you deserve to have the house? Well, because it was a huge house. It was really big. It was too big for you? Well, no, my father... Well, and that's come up with me as an adult. Uh, people that I date, well, why do you live in such a big house? All it's right, not that big. Spot. So even though I really deserve to live in a hovel... <laughs> even though I really deserve to live in a hovel. Whew. Not a big house. Not a big house. Because only really important people live in big houses. Because only really important people live in big houses. I accept myself. I accept myself. And even though I'm not a really important person. Even though I'm not a really important I'm person. I'm just a small person. I'm just a small person. I accept myself. I accept myself. I'm too little for big houses. I'm too little for big houses. And I don't deserve them anyway. I don't deserve it anyway. Deservingness is a very common issue. Yeah, mine's okay. deserving. I don't deserve this. Tap here. I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this. I haven't earned it. I, I can't quite hear him. Could you turn him up a little bit? What was that last I one? haven't earned it. I haven't earned it. What do you got to do? Hmm? What do you got to do to earn it? Um, I don't know. Boy, did you find it, though. Woo! Well, which bit? I was, I was just poking around. By the way, the way that we work... David and myself, we, we call this provocative energy techniques. It's essentially, we're, we're just fishing around in the area and mm -hmm. throwing up possible negative beliefs. And the one that emotionally hits, you run it up the flagpole, you emotionally salute it, that's the one. Yeah. Okay. Well, is it the little girl one? Is it that I don't deserve it one? Is it the... What is it? I kind of think they're tied together. Little and don't deserve it, because only big my, people my, can... My, well, my little girl doesn't think she deserves it. They have big houses for big people. Like Gulliver's Travels. Isn't that, is that the story where... Yeah. 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 Just have to check, you know, my memory. No, it's not little in size. It's I, I don't... I, th I think I don't deserve it. All right. It's deserving has been... has shown up a lot for me. Yeah, but okay. All right. Well, you've got to do something to deserve this. And that's actually... That's, there's a truth there. You actually have to provide value. And the reality is a lot of people think that they didn't just have something for nothing. It's like, well, um, the, the, the manifestation of this is actually provide value so people give you something. Yeah, well, I, okay. I do provide a lot of value. All right, but not enough. Yeah. Okay. And your best you've got is not enough. Tap here. Yeah. So the best I not have enough is not enough. Was, is, has always been huge for me. Yeah. Not enough. So anyway. I'm not enough. I'm not enough. I don't have enough time. Don't. Go I'm ahead. Not Gary's much more giving and forgiving of this, you know, than me. You're going to do it my way. <laughs> got to do it your way. I don't have enough. I'm not enough. I don't have enough. I don't have enough. By the way, a lot of people would say, even though you believe that you don't have enough, or even though you feel that you are not enough, we don't do that. We go to the strongest <clears throat> thought, which is the one that's in her head, which is, I'm not care. enough. I'm not good enough. I don't deserve this. All those things. Now, is that true? No, that's a bunch of BS. Okay? Belief systems. All right? 
And, and, and that's just her belief system. But for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to accept the reality of that in her world. And it's very important for me to see that that's just a bunch of BS. Okay? It's just the lie that she's running on. We've all, we're all running on a bunch of lies. It's all illusion. The whole thing is. Okay? But this particular one works in this particular way. Okay? So I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I am not enough. I am not enough. I haven't done enough. I haven't done enough. To earn this. To earn this. What do you got to do? Write my second book. <laughs> and? Work with more corporations. Up here. And? Uh, see more people in charge and figure out how to market. And, and then at which point do you get to feel happy? I'm just wondering. At which point do I get to feel happy? Or successful? When I have enough money to pay my mortgage. Okay. Well, but that how I've well? created. When I have enough money to pay my mortgage, that when I have created the money. Okay. And have you got a nice number there for me? Can you tell me how much that is? Because then when you get that, we know that you'll be happy and we can feel good for you. I want to make $150,000 a year. Okay. I want to make $150,000 a year. I actually want to make 200000 a year, but that sounded greedy. <laughs> it is greedy. Good. Can I be greedy? No. I live in San Diego. It's so expensive there. No, you get to have maybe 100000 Even I only say maybe 100000 because it's only a want. It's not a goal. Say you never again. made it a goal. You just said that's what you want. Okay. Okay. So I heard you. You said, I want to make $100,000. True. No, I said 150 first, and then I changed it to 200. Did she? Yeah. yeah. Well, I heard 100. <laughs> I figured 150 was too much for you. How much are you really worth? The limitless, I have the limitless, boundless worth of... About the, 250 if I could get over the not enough. You're worth about 250 if you yeah. could what? I said if I could get over my not enough stuff. Ah, my gosh. So you really want 250 but you're going to settle for less than 100 No. I have been settling for less than 100 Correct. Okay. What I'm saying is you continue to do that until you decide to make it different. Okay. okay, and part of you believes I can't make a difference. The other part of you believes I don't, I don't you know, deserve to make a difference. Maybe part of you also doesn't think it's good for people to have that money. Say that again, please. Maybe part of you doesn't believe it's good for people to have that much money. My father was very critical of rich people. Exactly. Rub the sauce And my pot. mother was very rich. <laughs> <sighs> okay, rub this sauce pot. So even though my mother was a rich bitch... Even though my mother was a rich bitch... And my father had it all. And my father had it he all. He knew what was really important. He knew what was, oh God. He was just forced to go along really with the important. program. He what? He was just forced to go along with the program. He was just forced to go along with the program. I hear my own rubbing. Should I drub the other way? <laughs> <laughs> Tap here. Say, greed is bad. Greed is bad. So I'm bad. I'm bad. Because I'm greedy, just like my mom. Because I'm greedy, just like my mom. Are you ashamed of yourself? Oh, yeah, I'm ashamed of myself. You should be able to settle for less, you know. Say it again. You should be able to settle for less. I should be able to settle for less. Oh, God, you just really hit something. Man, there's a lot of things to hit. It's just like shooting fish in a barrel with you. <laughs> <laughs> I should be able to settle for less. Money isn't important. Money isn't important. I shouldn't be so caught up in wanting it. I shouldn't be so caught up in wanting it. Well, that's very spiritual of you. I'm, pla I'm glad there is at least one spiritual person in the room. Everyone else is just greedy, you know. Right. <laughs> Except for the, you know, I think there's one. No, he's left. All right. So what's in your mind or your body right now? I'm sorry? What's in your mind or your body right now? Um, that connecting spirituality with money. I was raised Catholic and like the nuns and the priests didn't have anything of their they own. They don't have any money in the Catholic Church. They don't have church. any money. <laughs> right. Hello. But the nuns and priests, you know, like the good people all took a vow of poverty. Excellent. And I think that's so what you should do. Because... 
Really, if you're going to Evidently, gonna I have, it, the way my life is shown. What chance you got? You're going straight to hell. Rub this sauce pot. Pardon me? I am. Even though I'm going straight to hell. I was told hell. that by so many nuns. Yeah. Well, they, see, they recognised it. <laughs> at an early age, and you haven't given up your greed yet. Now's and the time. And remember, I'm incorrigible and I'll never amount to anything. That's my senior homeroom nun in front of the whole class. Well, you me. never amount to anything, and if you do, you're going to hell. Rub this sauce pot. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> So even though I want to be more spiritual. Even though I want to be more spiritual. And I'm not. And I'm not. And I'm going straight to hell. And I'm going straight to hell. I'm creating hell now. For all these greedy desires. Say it again. For all these greedy desires. For all these greedy desires. I accept myself. I accept myself. I'm greedy. I'm greedy. I'm going to burn in hell. I'm going to burn in hell. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. There will be wailing, weeping and gnashing of teeth. And it'll be my teeth. It'll be my, <laughs> my teeth. But at least they'll have gold in them. At least I'll have gold in them. <laughs> All right, that's better. Take a deep breath. She already did, if anybody noticed. What? What's the feeling right now? I can't hear you very well. What's the feeling right now? Um... I just felt a... Whew, yeah, know? I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, there's more to do here, all right? Yeah. But just, you can do some more from, from that. On all those previous experiences with the nuns and the mum and dad and dad saying this and all that sort of stuff, that's what's programming your behaviour. Yeah. Sure.